had my nickel and I'll get my coat. And this man came, white man. I can see him today. His eyes were blazing. His face got red. And he said, stand on your feet, black boy. You can't sit down here. That was my first real confrontation with segregation from black and white. A little black boy and big white man. You can't sit down here. Stand on your feet. So I decided, and I was only about eight years old, that I was going to stand against that kind of thing the rest of my life. Leon Howard Sullivan did just that. He did not cower. He did not quit. His legacy lives on. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. This is where his story begins, in a shack, in a dirt alley, in Charleston, West Virginia. In fact, in the alley behind the alley, as Sullivan would point out. Born in 1922, Leon was raised by his grandmother, who saw to it that he was schooled in the classroom and in the Word of God. Perhaps the greatest influence on young Sullivan was his pastor at the First Baptist Church. The Reverend Moses Newsom saw something special in Sullivan and helped arrange a scholarship for him to attend West Virginia State College. It was during his college years that Sullivan said he began to feel the stirrings of God's call to ministry. The first words he spoke from the pulpit occurred here, at Vandalia Baptist, where the congregation paid him in ham and eggs. After graduation, Sullivan boarded a Jim Crow train bound for New York City and the fledgling civil rights movement. As would prove to be true throughout his life, Sullivan was not hesitant to approach powerful and influential people. When the Reverend Adam Clayton Powell made a trip to West Virginia in 1943, Sullivan made sure to capture Powell's attention, which later led to an invitation to join Powell as an associate minister at Harlem's Abyssinian Baptist Church. At 21, the gangly six-foot-five Sullivan saw an opportunity and took it. Shake the dust off your feet, keep on going, and when there are obstacles and enemies, step over them. The Lion of Zion, the nickname he earned during 38 years of ministry at Zion Baptist Church in Philadelphia, and roar he did. From the pulpit at Zion, Sullivan became a towering figure in America's civil rights movement. When local firms refused to hire blacks, Sullivan organized more than 400 black churches and battled the injustice on the bottom line through boycotts. His selective patronage movement would later be used by the Reverend Martin Luther King as a model for the Operation Breadbasket program. Jobs opened up, but the problem was people weren't trained for them. A problem for some, an opportunity for Sullivan. In 1964, he founded a job training program that would spread worldwide. The first OIC, or Opportunity Industrialization Center, opened in an old jailhouse. President Johnson was there for the dedication. Sullivan, with the backing of his congregation at Zion, would not stop there. Shopping centers, housing. Together, they stood up against injustice and oppression. The vow he had made as a child, the Lion of Zion, continued to stalk. It wasn't long before he caught national attention and the interest of corporate America. In 1971, he made history when Leon Sullivan, who, as a child, had walked on the colored side of the street, walked into the New York headquarters 
of perhaps the largest corporation in the world and took his place at the table as a director of General Motors. In 1975, he made his first trip to South Africa to inspect GM's operations there and see apartheid for himself. What he witnessed was to haunt him. One night, after I was on the board of General Motors, I was thinking about South Africa. And I was saying, what can be done about it? Something can be done. And again, that voice said, Leon, you're on the board now. You do something about it. You do something about it. So I went back and decided to do something about it. With perseverance and faith, Sullivan convinced the board of GM to pen a code of conduct for American businesses operating in South Africa. These were no mere platitudes. The Sullivan principles drew headlines around the world uh, and a great deal of hostility as well. What business did he have? the black Baptist preacher from the hills of West Virginia, telling the corporate world how to operate. Sullivan was relentless. Apartheid would end, and Nelson Mandela would be freed. But once again, he would strike at the bottom line. In 1987, he called for a complete withdrawal of all U.S. companies and an immediate embargo against countries dealing in those practices. Within six months, more than 40 companies announced their departure. Four months later, 30 more joined the ranks. Billions of dollars left those that participated in those unfair practices. At the very top of my list was education. And school. And school. Yes, For children like you. Sullivan's interest in Africa would continue to grow. In 1983, he created the International Foundation for Education and Self-Help, otherwise known as IFESH. IFESH tackled an array of challenges, education, economic development, debt relief, and more. Its mission was the central tenet of Sullivan's philosophy, to provide a hand up and not a hand out. As he had done in Philadelphia and South Africa, Sullivan shepherded individuals, corporations, government agencies, NGOs, and herded them toward the need, the cause, the vision of a new Africa. The first assembly took place in 1991 under the banner of the African African American Summit. Each of the five previous summits building on the others, and building a bridge between the continents. Always quick to credit God first, and then his wife, Grace, Sullivan was humble about his accomplishments. Any one of them would have been remarkable in and of itself. The growth of Zion Baptist and his work in the American Civil Rights Movement, OIC, IFESH, the Sullivan Principles, and the summits viewed collectively they become almost staggering in impact. In 1992, he was awarded America's highest civilian award, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It was given to him by the first President, George Bush. <laughs> Sullivan never forgot his roots and was fond of referring to himself as little more than a black Baptist minister from the hills of West Virginia. He carried his message of hope across the globe and back home to the children of his old neighborhood. Believe in yourself. Believe you can do anything anyone else can do, but you must believe it. You're like a balloon. It's not your color that makes you rise, but what you have inside of you. So learn, work, 
and believe that you can do anything anyone else can do. As a boy, Leon walked to school on the colored side of the street. Many decades later, he would return to see his hometown, name its central artery, Leon Sullivan Way, exit 100, at the convergence of Interstates 64, 77, and 79. Asked by the mayor if he would like it to read Boulevard, Street, or Highway, the poetic Sullivan chose simply, Way. This is a moment in my greatest imagination I thought could never happen. And I hope walking the Leon Sullivan Way will help every child, especially those considered the least, to know that with determination and love and faith in God, impossible things can happen. I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. It was a band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. A child somewhere can be helped somehow by any one of you. So help the children. And by doing in the future, we will move mountains.